I'm Holly, and um, this is Sergei Shubin and Polina Kavina from our project SAMIS, which stands for Social Support and Migration in Scotland. Um, for the last year or so, our project has been carrying out fieldwork in both urban and rural areas um, of Scotland, including cities of Glasgow and Aberdeen, and also rural Aberdeenshire and Angus. Um, our key question was how migrants make themselves socially, economically, and politically, and culturally secure in their new environment. Um, so we've just finished up interviews with migrants, expert interviews, participant observations, and field notes, migrant photo diaries, this kind of research part. But I think what's probably most interesting for us today, um, and why we're so happy to have come along to this workshop, is that we're moving on to our next stage of participatory action research which basically means that before we try to start publishing papers and things like this, we want to try and make sure that our research has some more immediate impact. So what are the issues faced by migrants from Central and Eastern Europe in Scotland today? Um, and so we're thinking about sort of small projects in the regions where we've been conducting the research to try and address some of these issues and try and have a, not just a short-term impact, but a longer-term impact as well. Um, a key part of participatory action research for us is also consulta so consultations with migrants and involving them in these smaller projects that we'll be doing to make sure that we actually are addressing these needs. So although the, these projects are based on what we've already found over the last year or so, um, it's very important that the migrants are still involved and um, continue to contribute and make sure we're not sort of just running off with an idea by ourselves, so to speak. Um, what's most relevant for us today then is one of our ideas is, a, is to have an exhibition about migrant life in Scotland, um, which is why it's been excellent uh, the last couple of years. It's what everybody's been doing, even on an international level, around migration in museums. And we certainly came away yesterday with a lot of ideas and things, I think, you would agree. degree. Um, so, we first came up with the idea for an exhibition because we noticed in the smaller communities where we're working, there are local museums, but there's a lack really of representation of the considerable migrant populations there, particularly in small towns, for example, such as Peterhead in Aberdeenshire, where, um, echoing what Diana and Shibuta said earlier, 50% of the high school population, for example, um, is of Eastern European origin. Um, so I, I myself went into the museum a few months ago and noticed here's a community <laughs> exhibition, what's going on. It was all about the history of fisheries in the region, which is very important, and people were contributing sort of this material culture and items that people could look at, but there was nothing at all that reflected this migrant population. So we thought, what can we do with this? So we've been talking to um, Glasgow Museums, people from Glasgow Museums, which has been really useful to see the collections here. And also up in Aberdeenshire, Peterhead Museum, um, or what is called the Arbuthnet Museum. Um, we've been talking about trying to develop a smaller exhibition to reflect both what we found and what migrant life is like today. Um, we're very much at the early stage of this, so we very much welcome feedback. But um, we're focusing on trying to make narratives around why do migrants come to Scotland, and particularly around why do they settle in Scotland, what is it that they choose to stay, and how does this process of settlement take place. Um, through this we might look at, for example, expectations of what Scotland was going to be like versus the reality. Um, work and leisure time, a lot of people in the north work in the fish factories or in Angus work in agricultural industry. So those are two things, sort of trying to represent those experiences might be quite a useful thing for us. Um, and also very much links to local places and spaces using maps, maps perhaps to try and convey how migrants use the space both when they first arrive and how they relate to new places once they've settled in a bit more. Um, so I think the next stage for us is we'd be really happy, obviously not right now, but later on to hear um, more input from those of you who have ex experience with exhibitions already. Um, we're very new to all this. We have some ideas around, for example, making visual panels, using material culture, sound recordings, trying to represent work experiences, using local artwork from collections as well, recipes, national clothing, um, and also school workshops to involve sort of 
both school children and parents. Um, but again, we'd be really happy to talk to you all later and to hear about any experiences you've had in representing my good life that might have been useful. <coughs> yeah, just a couple of things. Yeah. First, our project is social security and settlement. And kind of a moment is called, so it's actually not about social support, but it's about how secure people feel. Mm -hmm. And things about things like emotional security. Mm -hmm. So we really came to think about things. I had a conversation yesterday about emotions and those intangible elements and how do you kind of represent them? How do you make sense of those things which really matter to you? Kind of disconnections, void, separation, loneliness, isolation, things like those. And I, another thing just to, to add, actually me and Holly represent the University of Swansea, not the University of Glasgow, so it's a joint project between two things. So the biggest slides probably would have reflected but at another stage. So just to say that we actually work with also with National uh, Museum of Wales and try to think about how this exhibition can be translated and made local, how we can connect to things there as well. And uh, sort of think about workshops, hands on things, um, celebrations, and so on. Thank you. Can I just add one more thing? Yeah. And one, one more last thing, yes, because um, me and Holly know that it's been very, we've been doing research in rural places and other places, and it's been <coughs> quite difficult also to get participants for the study, you know, just to persuade people to talk to us, to give us their time because they have a lot of other obligations, you know, long working hours, unsociable working hours, families, and so on. And one thing that we were thinking about was that it would be really, really important for us to include people in sort of co-producing the exhibition if, if we do come to this stage. And if any of you have any ideas on how to sort of um, make people more, um, encourage people more <laughs> to actually take part in this process, despite the fact that they have other obligations and so on, that would be really, really, really useful for us. So that's all for my